Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Mansa. First, I'd like to thank the Vice Chancellor, the TNCA, and uh, Pengarah of PEP for inviting me to give a sharing on my teaching during the time of COVID. I'm sorry I can't be around, but here is the TNL in the time of COVID from me. So this is my timeline. Initially, before our course starts, we usually do course information and teaching plan. As I conducted my teaching plan, there were arising issues due to COVID-19 right about the fifth week. And then everybody started doing mitigation issues, uh, mitigation of the issues arising from the COVID. And then I'm up to here now, continue, continuous maintenance of remote teacher student communication and relationship. I try my best to abide by the constructive alignment where we have learning outcomes that match the teaching plan and assessment. And then, as I was going along with my course, the COVID uh, issue arised and we cannot do any more face-to-face. -face. So, what I did next was to find out what I can do by following up on some courses and then sending out questionnaires to the students. And then, from those questionnaires, I discussed with the students, which I'll show you in a bit. And then we tried some solutions, reviewed it, and then action. Uh, did a, an action over the review of it. And then I really, on all this process, I strove to actually uh, get buy-in from the students. And then now I only need to maintain this communication and relationship between me and the students through all these apps this is my course information and teaching plan briefly it's a design project kind of a subject okay and um, there's no exam in this subject because all of it is assignment and i need the students to actually communicate and do their work okay next due to the arising uh, issues due to covid i i think everybody started looking like this lady over here and the question of how to uh, sort of teach complex problem solving and modern tool usage in this condition where I have like this are the where all my students are scattered okay and then not a lot of them are in the hostel part of my fact-finding mission uh, was the map previously and also some question as to ask them about the broadband and then the ability to get internet. Actually, these uh, four students here, I found out that um, they they didn't have like, they misunderstood the question, some of them. Uh, they had internet but not strong. So, um, after discussion, you get to find out further how things are for them. I also needed to find out if they had laptops. I knew they had handphones. They needed a laptop to actually do this modern tools usage, high sys uh, process simulation, and also AutoCAD. Sometimes they have laptops, but the laptops cannot carry this uh, very heavy software. But after discussion with them, we managed to overcome the laptop and also the AutoCAD and high sys And then I also asked them that if they plan to continue to study during the MCO period, some said uh, maybe, and about two said no. And I, this is where I actually tell them I acknowledge what they say. And we try to discuss the problems and issues surrounding this project. Because it's a project and they need time, I try to give them a um, choices on when to start and then explain to them the the cause and effect if we chose some dates later or if we could start earlier. I also asked the students for some suggestions. Actually, I started using Telegram here because of this suggestion. It seems that they prefer Telegram as it has better functions compared to WhatsApp. And then uh, I used to have Google Meet or Zoom classes with them and this one I actually recorded and then I took time to actually send it to them. So the issues for some of the students is 
the AutoCAD installation had problems, internet connection, that's common already for this situation, especially Sabah. Laptop as well, with the higher data usage. That's why I moved away from video calling actually, because of this one. So these are some of the problems that we our students face. I also got some students to give us a bit of their sharing of their challenges and how they overcame the challenges during this MCO period. Our four main challenges to the MCO remote learning is adaptation to the new learning style, lack of facility, communication difficulty and environment disruption. Adaptation to the new learning styles can be overcome by make ourselves to get used to the time for doing our house chores and the time for doing our assignment and study. Lack of facilities such as limited internet problem reduced as government provides us free daily internet as additional data during MCO. Slower communication pass due to texting can be overcome using applications like Duo, Google Meet, or Zoom. Environment disruption can be solved by choosing a right time to do work or study. For example, during midnight when everyone was asleep. We students really really susah during this MCO. Our main four challenge during this remote learning is number one, there's no Wi-Fi and insufficient data to attend the class. Number two, really hard to do discussion. Number three, it's really hard to express our problem. When asked question in group, our group mate may not understand what we are trying to say. And number four, we need longer time to adapt in online learning. Build more telecommunication substation on the rural areas so the students can have a stable internet connection. Students should have self-discipline and good commitment to a group task to produce quality work. Pick one time when all members are available for discussion so members can focus to understand and answer the question. With your lecturers and friends and let them know the things that you don't understand. And in the spirit of mitigating issues, I tried with my students several solutions. Like there's also Aspen Tech. So basically, the students learn three modern tools in this subject, which is very important for IR 4.0. Okay, I don't have much time now. I'll quickly share this. Okay, these are quick tips on how to maintain communication with your students as well as relationship via telegram okay always remember for class management first create folders in telegram so you can open a folder here and then label it your class and then create chat groups for each group which you can all place in i mean which you can place all of it into this folder i also make sure that there's one class session chat and also one lesson plan chat with only me in it. So in this lesson plan chat, there's no other students there or nobody else, only me. I actually put what I plan to teach for the next day or the next class that I'm doing. So it's all hashtag and written down so that if I... I change my mind or I want to edit anything or I have any videos that I want to... Uh, you know send out in order i i put it into this chat in the order of which i'm gonna give it in the class so that helps me organize myself better and saves time with uh this chat it's an instruction base so basically the students don't see you talk and it's sometimes very hard for them to actually understand what you type so what i do is i always start with a cheerful greeting to give them a positive vibe okay it's very important to do this and then i give them very clear instructions i hope i do give them very clear instructions maybe it's not but i always try to ask them feedback so i use create polls to keep interaction alive it's a good way to gauge if the students are involving in the class or they like it or they don't like it it also it is also good for formative assessment and remember this create a happy environment create a routine the routine will actually be like um, laying out the floor tile properly the first time around so that you don't have problems in the future and remember always be kind and then when you end the class 
you only you should always end with a summary and open for q and a if they wish to with that i thank you you can ask me questions since i'm not around on the this bitly page